information in this video will be centered around uh, building background for the ecology unit, which will include some terms and concepts that will help you understand um, ecology. So we start off with the word cycle. A, a cycle refers to a series or a set of events that are regularly repeated. Uh, we can see the, the picture right there uh, represents a cycle, a constant repeating um, set of events. Uh, some examples that we use in biology, uh, the water cycle, for instance, is a set of events that are regularly repeated. You know, we have the water um, uh, evaporate, condense into the sky, into the clouds, uh, move over to the land, um, it falls as precipitation, uh, flows across the land, sinks in, and repeats itself. Uh, carbon cycle will do uh, the same thing, and we'll talk about the material cycle uh, in ecology as well. Uh, the term resources refers to a substance that is required by living organisms for normal growth, maintenance, and reproduction. Uh, some examples of resources would include breeding and growing spaces. So we need the space. The space is a resource. Food and water is a resource. Again, um, centered around normal growth and maintenance and reproduction. Uh, if you don't have enough food or water, you can't reproduce. Uh, shelter goes right along with space, sunlight. Um, are some examples of resources uh, required by living organisms for normal growth, maintenance, and reproduction. The term energy has lots of meanings and definitions depending on it, how it's used. Uh, in biology, it's used differently than, let's say, in physics, where energy is the ability to do, do some work or create change. In living things, it is the uh, molecules created to allow cells to do the work or create the change. So energy is viewed a little differently in living things versus um, just what the classic definition of energy is. Energy is stored as, biologically, it's stored as carbohydrates and lipids. Um, and then it is then released by breaking those bonds within those carbohydrates and lipids um, during the process we call cellular respiration. And so that's the term or concept of energy. But here's a tricky little term, matter. You know, matter, if you remember back to uh, physical science, uh, was defined as anything that has mass or occupies space. And that there are three main states of matter. It could be in the solid form, the liquid form, and the gaseous form. Uh, for us in biology, we refer to matter materials in the same uh, sentence in the same likeness um, and we basically are talking about uh, the stuff that makes up everything on earth and especially the living things on earth and that's what matter is going to be referred to all right biodiversity one of my favorite terms in biology um, by definition refers to the amount of variety or diversity in plants and animals that exist in a given ecosystem uh, i can think of it as it, it's, the, it's the stuff in an ecosystem that makes it interesting you know how diverse might it be? Um, you can see the picture on the left is um, some uh, beautiful parrots that are, are perching on this tree in the, in the rainforest um, over here. It's uh, a little bit more barren. The diversity is a little bit lower. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about you know, the importance of having a great variety versus um, what happens when the variety decreases. All right, the next term is habitat. And habitat's a little tricky to understand. Um, by definition, it's just the area within an ecosystem where a specific species lives. And it's true as a group um, of within the species, uh, more like a population. Um, now, if you think of the ecosystem as a neighborhood, then the habitat refers to kind of a specific house within that neighborhood where um, a group might live. That's doesn't hold true 100% of the time, but it's pretty good. Uh, when you describe a habitat, it includes your physical environment and the living things in that environment. So uh, as you and the neighborhood goes, um, your house looks very specific, and uh, that's the physical environment, and then some living things that go along with that. It would include things like your family and uh, things that are around you as well. So uh, habitat, again, a little tricky to understand or uh, to grasp. Um, you can see some pictures of them here. Um, again, uh, the area within an ecosystem where a sp specific species lives or might live uh, includes the physical environment and the things in that environment. 
Here's some pictures of algae. Now, as we teach ecology, um, we use algae at the base of our, our food chains and our food uh, pyramids a bunch, um, especially when we're talking um, about aquatic ecosystems. Um, now, algae isn't a plant, um, but we refer to it as a plant sometimes. But you got to know that by definition, algae is just an aquatic plant-like organism. Um, it's like a plant because it has some of those same characteristics. For instance, it has cells that has a, have a nucleus. Uh, it's eukaryotic. Um, they do photosynthesis and, and have chlorophyll just like plants do. Um, it, we can see multicellular forms of it just like plants. However, we see a lot more algae that is unicellular, which isn't like plants. You can see the, the floating stuff here at the upper left um, and the uh, lower right-hand corners as probably unicellular um, um, forms of this algae. And you can see the, the ones at the upper right-hand corner are unicellular ones that are living in colonies. Uh, the main thing that doesn't, or that differentiates algae from true plants is the fact that it lacks true roots, shoots, and leaves. Um, however, it is a very important piece of ecology, especially at the base of our uh, food uh, chains and pyramids. And of course, competition has to be included in our discussion of ecology. Um, competition is the fight for a specific resource. And of course, you see the three pictures on the screen really shows competition. Um, and competition can happen in all parts of ecology. Here uh, we have the lion defending its food against uh, the hyenas who are also after that same resource. Uh, the two uh, the two insects that are on the plant fighting over the same resource or are attempting to use the same resource and the plants even fighting for the resource in this case probably the sun as one tree tries to outgrow the next tree predation um, predation is the act of one animal finding another animal and using it as a food source um, I think we you know we deal with predation a lot um, in the younger years uh, this is so this should be a, just a reminder that a predator is the animal that finds the other and the prey is that animal <laughs> that the predator finds and he actually eats um, so this predator prey relationship is called predation as you can see by the pictures uh, capacity is used in a few different ways um, here in the upper right hand corner you see this picture we're at capacity you know the the liquid inside the, the glass is right at the top. Here at the upper left-hand corner defines what it will take to meet capacity or, or at the top of the capacity. Uh, the glass isn't at capacity in this draft. Well, let's be honest, that just isn't right. So if you look at capacity as, as it's defined, it's the amount that something can hold without breaking or being permanently changed. All right, this next term, plankton, you'll hear a lot when we talk during our uh, discussions on food webs and food chains, as plankton are the base of many different um, aquatic um, systems, food chains and food webs. So uh, plankton refers to the variety of microscopic living organisms that live in water and cannot swim against the current by themselves. Uh, there's many different varieties, um, but all of them are an important food source for these aquatic uh, food webs. The varieties you see on the screen, this one right here, we call zooplankton. Um, it's animal-like plankton. Again, um, a microscopic, uh, they live in water. Um, they're very important to the, the food, a very important food source. Uh, this other one is an example of a phytoplankton. Um, phyto referring to light, so they use light like a plant does. You can see the next term is biotic, and biotic refers to the living parts of an ecosystem. Each of these pictures portrays living with the non-living, but as we look closer at these photos, what we would consider the biotic parts, um, the, gra the, the grass, the trees, the mosses, uh, maybe the fish and, and other things are living in the, um, the, the water here. This plant uh, growing in this ecosystem, that's a biotic part. 
uh, the muskrat, the grasses, and other weeds and, and associated with this picture, etc. Anything of these pictures that of, that's considered living meet the eight characteristics of living things. Those are the parts of the ecosystem that we refer to as being biotic. And the last term that we are going to talk about is the, the term abiotic. And if we go back to our common word parts, you see uh, two main word parts here. A, meaning not or non, and bio, which is referring to living things. And so if you put those together, you have, um, you have what the definition is for um, abiotic. So the, uh, the term abiotic does mean the non-living parts of an ecosystem. And again, here's our picture from the last um, slide where we talked about the biotic factors or the biotic parts. Here we're talking about the non-living parts and we're gonna pick out just the opposite, the water itself. We see some sky, maybe there's some pollution in the sky, that would be abiotic. Um, how much sunlight this area gets. Sunlight, again, is a non-living part of the ecosystem. Um, how warm this place is. Uh, we see that the, the terrain is very rocky. The soil is a certain type. Soil is a, a non-living part of this ecosystem.